Hey, this is Mike Lynn with MongoDB's developer advocacy team, and I am going to show you very quickly how to create a data-enabled endpoint, uh, data API, so to speak, using MongoDB Atlas and MongoDB Stitch. So the first thing we're going to do is create a cluster. Now, I've already done that because it takes about seven minutes to deploy. Uh, I've chosen all of the default options. This is an M0 sized instance. Good to go. Second thing I'm going to do is create some security configuration that will enable me to connect to this instance from where I'm at. Uh, that involves creating an IP whitelist entry for my IP and then a user that will enable me to connect to the database. So very simple, couple of configurations. Next, I'm going to create a Stitch app. Now that also takes about three minutes to create, so I went ahead and just created one uh, very quickly. And I did go in and create a user provider. So Stitch gives you the ability to uh, have authentication built in. You, now you can authenticate your users with Google, with Facebook, with API keys, a custom authentication. But for this example, I'm just going to enable anonymous authentication. And that's, that's all I've done with this application. Uh, let's talk about the data. So in our cluster, we don't have any data yet. If I look at the collection viewer, we're going to see that there's no data, no databases. Let's take some example data from our spreadsheet here with contact information. And we'll download that as CSV. And then we'll show how to connect to this instance to import it into our cluster. Uh, we use a tool called Mongo Import, and I just clicked on the button that takes me to a customized version of the command with all of the syntax filled out specifically for my cluster. Now I'll have to replace the database name and password and, and provide the type, which is CSV, and provide a path name to the file I want to import. Uh, but through the magic of preparation, I've already done that. And uh, you can see here I've been running some tests in the background, but this is the command I'm running. I've also added a dash dash header line. This is important because in my test data, if we look at that again, you can see the first row has a list of the column names which will become the attributes in our documents. So let's go ahead and import that data. We imported six documents. Let's go take a look at our collection viewer again. And we'll see that we have data in our database. There we go. Uh, again, very simply, just simple data, nothing fancy there. Now let's go focus on creating that data API. Now, since we've got data in, uh, we are going to want to uh, create a service that listens for requests for our data. Now we do that in Stitch by creating a Stitch app and then creating a service. So I'll click Add Service. We have a couple to choose from. We can create a Twilio service or a GitHub or AWS services, but I'm going to create an HTTP listener service and maybe I'll call it HTTP. Once I add it, I'm going to then see that I need to create an incoming webhook. This webhook is going to be what creates the listener. So I'll leave it calling, I'll call it webhook zero, and I'm going to respond to get requests. I'm going to respond with a result. This is going to be the data from our database. I'll run the webhook as the system, that's fine. And I'm not going to validate the uh, request at this time. That's an additional measure of security. Uh, just for the simple example, we won't do that. Once I click Save, um, I see that I'm in the function editor. This function is JavaScript. It's ES6. And it is what is going to run when a, a request comes in to the listener. And speaking of that listener, how do we get to that listener? So this is an API that we want to respond to requests over the internet. How do I get to it then? Well, that can be found in the settings panel. So we click on the tab called settings and we see that this address is uh, on the mongodbstitch.com domain and it references our incoming webhook. I'm gonna copy that because we'll need it at some point. Um, and here's the rest of our, our parameters. So let's go back to this function. If we were to run this uh, right now, it's not gonna be very interesting. It's just gonna return hello world. How does it get Hello World? Where is that coming from? Let's look at the console. We're, we're running this with, some, uh, with a payload that is a document, a query document with an argument, hello, and a body with 
the message world. So in our function, we're translating that and we're just displaying what we got. And I'd like to just, let's take a minute and create a new function that gives us our data. So we have a data enabled API like I promised. So let me just type this out. I'm gonna create a constant called MongoDB, which points to a context element in the services object. And I'm gonna get that service called MongoDB Atlas. And then I'm going to create a constant called my collection, which is pointing to the MongoDB object and uh, the database called my database and a collection oddly called my collection. From there, we have the handles to the database and the collection. From here, all we really need to do is return the result of a find command. So I'm going to issue a myCollection.find and I'm going to pass that to the toArray function and that should give us what we need. I'm going to run it in the test and sure enough, here I see all of the documents that we had in our data uh, should be good to go. Let's go ahead and take that settings and copy that and we'll use a tool called Postman to test out our API. This is going to simulate a request from maybe a front end or a React application. And I'll just paste in that webhook and I'll send it. And oh, we get an undefined. undefined. Let's see what that's about. Uh, I've got my respond with result. I've got get. Uh, oh, you know what I didn't do? I didn't save. So you need to make sure that you save the function so that that's deployed to the Stitch application and can be referenced externally. So let's go ahead and give that another shot once we do that, and it should be good to go. There we go. All of our documents are visible, and what we did was just created a data API in a couple of minutes with MongoDB Atlas and MongoDB Stitch. Uh, if you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter. I'm at mlin. Uh, look forward to seeing you online. Thanks, folks.